the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I greet you midway in Lent. I greet you also, those of us, those who are visiting from afar. I bless you. I'm coming off of about six days of being between my bed and, and just about my bed, a little bit at my desk. I've been sick. Uh, it's not COVID, so don't be alarmed. It's not the flu. Don't be alarmed. Apparently, there's a viral thing moving about in the neighborhood. The doctors told me that today. So I'm just grateful to be back on my feet, a little bit hoarse, and I'm so glad to be here. This evening, though we're in the middle of Lent and the lights are down, to me it feels like a resurrection. During my convalescence, I watched a a video documentary on the life of St. Ignatius of Antioch, one of the most famous of our saints, second century. And one thing that's very clear, if you read any of his writings or you study his life, it is impossible, impossible to come away and not realize that the Eucharist, the bread and the wine, which is offered on the altar which is miraculously made into the body and blood of Jesus Christ. For St. Ignatius, it's real. It's real because it's that faith in the real presence of Christ made supremely manifest in bread and wine, which for us is the cup of immortality and the bread of life. For him... That's what powered him all the way from Asia to Rome for a martyrdom. A martyrdom that he could have turned down, that he could have set aside by simply offering a bit of incense. Are you aware that in his life he had the opportunity, but talk about a negative opportunity, he was brought before the Roman emperor himself. This is what won him a condemnation. He was before none other than Trajan, the emperor of emperors, and he stood him down. He would not break under the pressure of being in front of this august personality. It was for his boldness that Trajan sentenced him to death, but wanted it in Rome so that everybody could enjoy, if you will, that's in quotation marks, the spectacle of one more Christian who dared to stand up to the authority One more Christian getting his just desserts. There were so many ways that Ignatius, the holy man, could have avoided this. Good bishop. It's this long journey from Antioch all the way to Rome where he wrote so many letters, which a few of them have survived. We're here tonight in large measure because we are partaking in the Antiochian theology of the real presence of Christ among us. And so, what is that presence? To go back to scripture, it simply is this, and this is your message to keep for the rest of Lent, because it's life-giving. Our Lord says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He says also, he who comes under me will have life. He says again in another place, he who eats my body and drinks my blood will have life within him. I am the way. What is the way? In Lent, the way is the 40 days in the desert. What is the way? It's Moses being summoned, summoned to Sinai and going into those days to receive the law. What is the way for us? It's the way of the cross. We have the cross here before us. How can we not admit that our life is right now in the middle of the cross? It is right now for us this week, but world events tell us we're in the middle of the cross. I am the way. He says, I am the truth. And what does he say about the truth? The truth shall set you free. What does our Lord say about things that are truthful? Before Pilate, when Pilate says, what is truth? What is the answer on truth? 
Truth's a bitter pill for liars. Truth's a bitter message for thieves. Truth is a hardship for sinners. Because truth is very binary. You either have it or you don't. And so many of our brothers and sisters, they don't have it. And they need us to pray for them that they might get it. So many of our friends and our neighbors, let's not forget our neighbors. How many of our neighbors need the truth and they won't get it right now, not without our prayers. Truth is also mysterious because we have truth on earth, but there's divine truth. The ordering of the entire cosmos is a truth. And he says, I am the life. And we know from pre- last week, John 10.10, 10, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And there you have it, brothers and sisters, the three things for Lent, the way, the truth, and the life. And here you've already had it served before you. You have the precious, immaculate, immortal body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ presented to you mystically upborn, as the text says, as St. Ignatius would have recognized it as St. Ignatius prays for us, that we would still recognize it. God, have mercy on us. May we have these things. May we give thanks for these things. May God save us, and may our prayers save those who are in need. God, have mercy. The blessings of the Lord be upon you through his grace and love towards mankind.